Welcome, space enthusiasts and fellow explorers. My name is Gitika Gorthy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Ignited Thinkers, a nonprofit organization I founded in the eighth grade to spread space education to all students. I am currently an aspiring aerospace physician and astronaut, and I'm incredibly honored and excited to be a Heinz Family Foundation student ambassador and host for World Space Week. To kick off our series of virtual resources, I am thrilled to be interviewing the founder and chairman of the Heinz Family Foundation, Mr. John Heinz. The Heinz Family Foundation for Education, Innovation, and Service is a nonprofit aiming to provide resources, opportunities, and support for deserving, underrepresented, and under-resourced individuals and groups. Mr. Hines is also the Managing Director and Chief Technical Officer at JH Technology Associates LLC, a California technology consulting and advisory services company. In December of 2012, Mr. Hines retired as NASA Ames Research Center Chief Technologist after nearly 37 years of service. I am incredibly excited to learn more about Mr. Hines' journey, what ignited his passion for space, as well as the work he's doing with the Hines Family Foundation. So welcome, Mr. Hines. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a pleasure to talk with you. We've talked several times in the past, and with your participation with the foundation and being a, a ambassador and fellow, you know, we've done quite a few wonderful things, and I think foresee many, many great things in the future. And I also want to congratulate you on your start of your academic career as you move forward to become an astronaut. One of these days, I hope to talk with you while you're flying in space and while you're on the moon. So it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes, I can't wait for that day where I talk to you from space. And to kick off our conversation, could you start by sharing your story? What ignited your passion for the aerospace industry and led to where you are today? Well, so I'm a product of the 60s, and um, one of my, two of my favorite TV shows when I grew up were Star Trek and Mission Impossible. And also during that period, you know that uh, the first uh, people landed on the moon in the late 60s. So between all of those things, you know, seeing that, that wonderful feat and that amazing feat that started in the sixth in 1960 with a kickoff by President Kennedy and then uh, culminated with a successful landing on the moon in the late 60s, 1969. You know, that was amazing and all in inspiring. At that time, I was a senior, about a senior in high school at the age 18 or 19. And, uh, you know, that was just a wow factor, just seeing that happen. And then seeing, watching Star Trek, being a, a Trekkie, a Trekker, as they call them, uh, I'd always looked at those kinds of things and thought about, you know, f fantasy and reality. And then seeing uh, humans land on the moon, you know, brought that uh, fantasy into reality. I also was studying engineering and I've always, always been a tinker. I guess I could call myself an early maker before makers were <laughs> popular. And I watched... Uh, Mission Impossible, and my idol was Greg Morris, the, the engineer there. So whenever an issue came up, uh, the point was he had a box for it. He could build it. He could make that. He could make that box and make that system. So as a combination of that, I always wanted to be that guy. And then I always wanted to be that guy in space and do things for space. And luckily and fortunately, throughout my career path, I got the opportunity to not to go to space, but to assist others and to be become a part of the space program. It's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, journey. Yeah, I look at everything that you've done from, you know, being a part of NASA's family, as well as what you're doing even after retirement to give back to the aerospace industry and to hear also your journey um, and what sparked your passion. I think many students of all ages can relate with your fascination with Star Trek and making all of those um, imaginations a reality. So it's very, very um, exciting to hear that. And I'm curious of what sparked your inspiration behind founding the Heinz Family Foundation and the purpose that you had when starting this nonprofit. Well, so, so it's interesting. Uh, I'm an only child, have no kids. Uh, and in 2016, uh, I went to a family reunion for the first time in, you know, maybe 20, 25 years. And, you know, all the family were there, all of their kids and, and people there. And, 
all of their futures and ambitions and so forth. And uh, we had uh, the event and then we had a family banquet. And at the family banquet, I'm sitting there listening to all the testimonies and watching all the people speak. And I didn't say a word to my wife. I got up uh, toward the end of it, went up to the mic, grabbed the mic and announced to the family that I'm starting a foundation, you know, in the, in the family <laughs> name. And so then I was stuck kind of. But, you know, also what uh, stoked, stoked me to do this is in all of my, you know, nearly 40 years of experience and activities within NASA, with the Air Force, with research organizations at the universities and so forth, uh, many, many possibilities and many opportunities were there, but there were not too many people that looked like me there. And, you know, so one of my dreams was how can I help? What can I do? And after having jumped off the cliff to start the foundation and announced to the family that I was going to do that, you know, it really started my passion and rekindled that whole thinking of maybe there's a way that I can give something back and to take something there and to help and assist others and to pass on uh, and convey many of the things that I learned and got exposed to that a lot of people don't have those opportunities. So my whole passion now is to try to make those opportunities possible. Wow, you know, first, just thank you for the work that you are doing, because there are a lot of individuals who are very blessed to have certain opportunities that they take for granted, but to be able to take those opportunities and break them down and to be able to provide a greater access to those resources is very difficult. So the fact, you know, I look at the work and the different initiatives the Heinz Family Foundation has towards creating these equal opportunities and accessible resources for all students um, and to see you know, you finding that gap and seeing that gap, recognizing that gap, and then taking initiative to solve it, um, I think is incredibly commendable. So thank you. And what does, you know, I was reading the Heinz Family Foundation's logo and theme and have been involved with the organization for a while, but I'm curious to hear from you, what does the Heinz Family Foundation logo and theme from STEM to esteem space um, motivated learning and training to enable the 21st century workforce mean to you? <laughs> it's a mouthful, huh? To start yes. with. But, you know, <laughs> really, when I, when I started the foundation, you know, there was a lot of activities you hear about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and uh, not being an educator, but following it. And as I re looked into it, I saw the pathway uh, as uh, that whole system evolved from STEM, then there was STEM 2.0 where there were actually hands-on activities. Then there was an A that added into it and made it STEAM. Uh, and so looking at that pathway and then coming from my perspective of technology and research and, and space missions and so forth, you know, I, I you know, made up another term called it STREAM. I added an R in it for research. And then looking at missions and projects and product development and the whole life cycle of things, you know, how do you manage these things? How do you learn how to do that? Once you learn the basic skills of science, technology, engineering, and math, then how do you take it forward and move it to the next step to move it into a mean, meaningful, meaningful career opportunity? So uh, originally I had a mouthful, I called it STEM 4.0, um, synonymous with industry 4.0 and so forth. Then I added a point that I called it stream MMS management making and service, which added all of that into it. And then all of a sudden I got the idea that, you know, maybe there's a way to show the evolution of going from basic science, technology, engineering, and math and basic learning, say at the K-12 STEM level, and how do you then transition that into the pathway to move through an academic uh, learning situation and into the workforce. And so, uh, the words esteem came up and, you know, basically from that STEM being science, technology, engineering, and math and esteem now really being an acronym, uh, not just esteem as you think of the word esteem, but now education, science, technology, engineering, entrepreneurship, and management. How do you take this into innovation? How do you turn it into careers? How do you turn it into the workforce? How do you, you know, create those new possibilities and opportunities. So it just sort of came to me that from STEM to esteem, uh, you know, says a lot of things and it conveys a lot of meaning. And it it seems to be obvious to quite a lot of people when I've mentioned it, that they really like and uh, relate to that concept. So now the esteem part is really how do we get it 
after you go through K-12 STEM, learn the basics, reading, writing, and arithmetic, if you will, uh, to take it into that pathway toward uh, career pathway and toward workforce development. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think that's so needed in the world that we're living in today. The aerospace industry is, you know, rapidly changing with new jobs coming up, uh, jobs you never even heard of maybe 10, 15 years ago. And so more than preparing for a career or, a, you know, a tool or to be able to fit a certain job description, we need to be able to apply all the STEM knowledge we're learning um, to any career that could be opening up in the next 10, 15 years. So the fact that the organization is focusing on skill development to transfer into many different career opportunities and even into jobs that don't exist today, I think is going to prove to be extremely valuable, especially in the aerospace industry. Yeah, and well, thank um, you. I hope so. You know, I was just going to say that, you know, in talking to quite a few people, I've had some interaction with uh, people on the National Space Council and the Office of Science and Technology Policy and their space focus now is uh, career opportunities for making people aware that there are just those kinds of opportunities that you just described, that there's more to space than being an astronaut or a rocket scientist. There are a lot of opportunities at many, at all levels and at all disciplines that uh, are necessary to make this huge enterprise function and work properly. Yeah, I love to think of space as its own little world. So any career, any skill set, any job you would need in the real world, you would need in this little aerospace bubble as well, whether that be an artist, a journalist, a lawyer, um, you know, policymaker, a doctor, literally anyone you would need in the aerospace industry. So yes, that's absolutely right. Um, aerospace is incredibly interdisciplinary. And so you where know, one, is... one interesting point, one interesting point that I noticed, and I, I, I take point, you Right now, seeing the space launch system, you know, roll out to the launch pad from the hangar. You know, here's a multi-billion-dollar uh, system. Lots and lots of expertise, lots of skill categories, lots of you know, disciplines involved. But who drives that vehicle to the to the launch pad? You know, who has the responsibility on their shoulders to drive that billion dollar, multi-billion dollar with the whole world watching and drive it safely to its location and put it in place so it's ready to do its job. You know, I mean, so many unsung jobs there, you know, librarians, you know, your documentation and data and quality assurance and management, you know, uh, so many skills that people don't think that they have a possibility to be involved in the space program because they don't think it relates to them. But, you know, I'm here to tell you that it does. Almost anything anybody does, there's a function in the space program for them. And, you know, part of my objective is to help identify and show and help people learn those skills and how to apply and integrate those skills into not just the space program, as you say, but those skills that can apply to most any endeavor. Yeah, perfectly said. And I, which I think perfectly ties in to the next question of where do you see the Heinz Family Foundation going? Like, where's the future of the foundation? And what support do you need from the aerospace industry to make this vision of the Heinz Family Foundation a reality? So the, so the trite answer, of course, is, is funding that every, uh, every nonprofit and organization says and support. But even more so, uh, there's so many skills, as, as you say, and so many areas and so many occupations and so many areas necessary in order to, you know, educate and train uh, the next, the skill set. You know, you have not just scientists and technologists and engineers, mathematicians, physicists, artists, you know, the whole gamut of activities, but, you know, to make that happen and with the purpose of identifying and supporting underserved uh, underrepresented students and population groups, as well as training them and giving them the capabilities to train and to evolve and to continue themselves. One of the issues is not only do we have to train the students, we need to train the teachers, because in a lot of these areas, the students don't get exposed to these skills and capabilities and these learning programs because the teachers have not been exposed to them. And so we have a two-pronged pathway now to not only to educate students and create programs and opportunities and learning pathways and so forth, but also to uh, educate teachers uh, with the skills of the 21st century uh, 
workforce so that they can then convey that to the students. I can take my small group of, of people and my team and a small group of team and train, you know, I take five people and train 20 students, okay? And I've trained 20 students. If I take those five people and train 20 teachers, each of whom have 20 students, now we've reached 400 students. So it's a multiplier. And so that's one of the things that we do. And the other point to realize is, as I've mentioned, I've been in technology and engineering for, you know, now going on 50 years or so. And, you know, that's a discipline and a vertical uh, occupation area in itself. But the academic and educator and STEM educator and STEM curriculum and outreach uh, areas are a whole other world that has and requires a whole other set of skills and capabilities to realize, you know, the common goal of educating and preparing uh, our 21st century workforce. So one of the things that we understood as we've learned about uh, this strategy called collective impact of bringing together multidisciplinary uh, organizations and groups toward a common goal and working together. And so essentially it's how do you find the way you set the goal, you define what you can do best, uh, understand what the goals are, understand what the gaps are, then team and work with those who have those skills and together you collectively go forward. So being able to now team with educators and universities and uh, in-service teachers and as well as technologists and engineers and scientists and learning system providers puts the whole picture together. So what I see now is going forward in this sort of collective impact approach with an organization, a, a loosely coupled organization of multifunction, multidiscipline, multi-organizational uh, people, experts, and subject matter experts, all addressing this common goal of enabling our 21st century underserved workforce. Wow, yes, I am so excited to see where the Heinz Family Foundation will continue to grow and involve in um, and to see it continue to make a larger and exponentially growing impact. And, and you know, I'm especially excited for World Space Week that's happening in October. And I wanted to get your thoughts. Do you have any final few words you'd like to say about the World Space Week event and just anything in general to wrap up our conversation today? Certainly, most certainly, and thank you very much. Uh, so one of the reasons uh, last year, uh, we participated with Christina Corp and uh, her Purpose Entertainment and Space for a Better World organization. And uh, she hosted World Space Week in Atlanta last year with a large exhibit in Woodruff Park uh, commemorating astronaut Stephanie Wilson. And there was also a, a space day science fair type activity at Georgia Tech uh, that we co-sponsored and supported uh, that year. Uh, this year, uh, we decided to really uh, take the bull by the horns and uh, organize it ourselves. And with a collection of our STEM Education and Training Alliance partners, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, Morehouse, Spelman, uh, universities in the Atlanta University Center, we came to an agreement to host it this year in the Atlanta University Center and uh, within the core of historically black colleges and universities there and really take the capabilities and the learning and the exposure that we're trying to do to the demographic that we're trying to touch. And so this year, uh, I'm pleased to be able to uh, be the organizer and co-sponsor of this along with many, uh, the Atlanta University Center, the Data Sciences Initiative, the uh, Georgia Space Grant Consortium and Georgia Tech, yourself, your company, and many other partners that I, I won't uh, take up all the time to name here, but you'll see them uh, there at World Space Week. We have some wonderful events. Uh, we are launching our knowledge portal, which is uh, this uh, interview is one of the elements of what we call our seminar series. Um, we will, in conjunction with the data sciences, uh, initiative uh, in the AUC uh, hosts a virtual data sciences for space STEM and sustainability oriented to exposing uh, academic opportunities for academic students uh, to, to learn and apply data sciences as well as to see career pathways from some people who have gone through that process. Uh, and then on uh, Saturday the 8th, uh, October 8th, we'll have 
Space Day Atlanta in the AUC at the Woodruff Library in the Atlanta University complex will have um, lots of STEM and technology and science and technology and engineering and space and sustainability type demonstrations. We'll have our subject matter experts and STEM ambassadors there. We'll have some guest uh, speakers and folk there with the idea to uh, expose our K-12 students uh, to one, the fact that these are the kinds of tools and technologies and learning capabilities that are available to them, but also here are the places and people that look like them that are there at the university that here's where you can go and where you can take it and where you can take it to begin to approach these uh, 21st century workforce careers that we're trying to uh, expose and get them involved in. And, you know, there's a huge sort of shortage of STEM uh, practitioners, STEM workers uh, in the United States and globally. And even more, when you look at women and minorities and people of color, it's even more constrained. And so hopefully uh, with this event, we can begin to expose our way of approaching this. We aren't the only one. There are many, many organizations that we uh, are, are in contact with and interact with. But you know, we have learning programs uh, for K-12 students. We have a program called STEM for a Reason. We have for academic and specialist learners, the STEM to esteem, as you see. And then the teacher training, we have a program that we call the STEM Teacher Research Applications and Innovation Network, the STEM train. And you know, we hope to be able to expose and showcase those types of activities as well as specific technology areas and STEM capability training programs, such as areas in sustainable living, uh, agriculture and climate and farming, environmental and space uh, systems, uh, smart manufacturing, uh, industry 4.0, space engineering, hands-on activities in life sciences, life health and biosciences, which I know is near and dear to your heart, uh, as well as mine. And so we're hoping that this will be a not just a single point, but a starting point to showcase the things that we're doing and to try to identify uh, partners, collaborators, supporters, sponsors. You've mentioned earlier, what kinds of things do we, do we need to go forward? Well, we have done a lot with volunteers and you know, uh, you know, personal con contributed resources and so forth. But for us to go the next step, you know, we want to encourage more subject matter experts, more mentors, more supporters, uh, more champions that can help to be role models for uh, and coaches for our kids as they go through these uh, processes and so forth. So we're really trying to uh, go forward. There are many, many things that uh, uh, people can do and groups can do can support and participate with us besides funding and resources. But of course, you know, you know, funding does make the world go round. So, you know, that those things are important, uh, as you know, in your foundation, you know, yeah, you've done many, many things, you know, yourself with volunteers and so forth, but I see you also are seeing, you know, the need to join and team more with shared capabilities. And, you know, these contributions don't always have to be just money. They can be in-kind contribution, just as, as you're supporting the, the, uh, seminar series through Ignited Thinkers and others are supporting through other programs, you know, this whole collective impact of everybody coming together, shared responsibilities, shared goals, um, mutually reinforcing activities, continuous communication, and a backbone organization, sort of the glue that kind of holds it together. So we hope to be that backbone uh, organization holding things together as we help students, you know, evolve and transform from STEM to esteem. Absolutely amazing. I think that was just a perfect way to encapsulate the spirit and the theme of World Space Week. I am so pumped and excited to come fly down to Atlanta to be able to visit and be a part of this incredible event. And I'm excited to see where this goes in the coming years. So thank you so much, Mr. Hines, for sharing your journey, as well as some of the work that the Hines Family Foundation is doing to support the next generation of aerospace leaders and the aerospace workforce.